by homosexuality and abortion and so forth. And he, here's his quote. He says, homosexual sodomy, it was criminal in all states. Abortion, it was criminal in all states. Clear, unquote. So clearly what he's saying here, he says, it's clearly that the people who wrote the 14th Amendment didn't think it had anything to do with homosexuality or abortion mm -hmm. because they didn't say this nullifies all the state's laws against homosexuality and abortion right. at the time. So only through seeing it as this living document, which you can now expand it mm -hmm. to include... Uh, they see things that aren't there. Mm -hmm. Right. Without the right to privacy. So they can live like they want to. W without reinterpreting the Constitution or even reinterpreting the Bible, any, any one of those documents, it stands in the way of people that have an immoral agenda. Right. It stands in their way. This right. nation... Uh, yeah. The, the whole thing that, that is holding the executive administration we per per currently have now is that United States Constitution, and they're doing their best to dismantle it because if they can dismantle this Constitution, they will dismantle this nation. Well, I think oh, the Obama administration has figured out something even better than that, <laughs> that you don't have to dismantle it. You just have to ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> and if nobody calls you, calls you on right. it, yeah. that's as good yeah. as it, it you know. <laughs> Right. And it's like everybody talks about the Tenth Amendment, which which says that power is not specifically delineated to the to the federal government, yeah. or the power of the states. That the Tenth Amendment was repealed many, many, many years ago. As a as a de facto, as a fact it, that you know in practicality it was. It's still on the books, right. but we wholly ignore it. We do. I mean, that, that is true. Do you know that? Uh, think about this, and, and this is a almost laughable example, but it, it just shows you how far we've come. If you build a new house now in the United States, the federal government tells you how much water the toilets can flush in your new home. Do you think that when the founders of, the, of, the, of this country wrote the Constitution, that's what they had in mind? Absolutely not. not at all. That the federal government was going to tell you how much water your toilets could flush? <laughs> they didn't even have toilets then. But just think about it. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Just, we We're, just some good information here out of Iowa. Uh, Tom Miller, the attorney general in Iowa that has been covering up for the big telemed scam, the, these Internet abortions that Planned Parenthood is doing in Iowa, and they want to expand across the United States. Well, he's got such a cozy relationship with Planned Parenthood up there that he's going to have to face an ethics board for three, thing, con three things. Conflict of interest due to his close professional conduct with Planned Parenthood hindering or impeding efforts to obtain, obtain an independent criminal investigation and for corruption. Good. So it's on the books. He's going to have to answer to this. Fantastic. Fantastic. We need more of that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, real quick, we're just about on time for this segment. Um, we're seeing uh, something that we've, uh, we've talked about many times before. Um, the Obama administration, of course, is working hard to take away the rights of health care provi providers not to participate in abortion, to rescind right. the conscience clause. Right. Obama administration is working overtime right now to take away those. Now we have um, the American Board of Obstetricians and Gynecologists in association with the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology doing the same thing. They've done this many times in the past. They've attempted it many times in the past. They've come to the point now we're saying basically that a doctor who won't either do an abortion or at least have a preset referral to an abortionist, which makes him a participant in it, mm -hmm. um, is, is committed malpractice. We've talked about that before. Now they're threatening not to give credentials to any physician who won't do this. The American Board of Obstet Obstetricians and Gynecologists and ACOG are both saying that pro-life physicians should relocate their offices so that they will be in close proximity to abortionists that they can refer clients to. That's their version of a, of a conscience clause. In choice. It's going to be a war breakout with my doctor. And, and it's he, just... He said he would never be made to do an abortion. I, you know, when I was under Clinton, I asked and him. I think there's a lot of doctors that feel the same way. I think, I think there are, too. We'll be right back. Society can prevent those who are manifestly unfit from continuing their kind. Three generations of imbeciles are enough. I do not join in the belief that the African is our equal in brain or in heart. 
We are paying for and even submitting to the dictates of an ever-increasing, unceasingly spawning class of human beings who never should have been born at all. The laws of nature require the obliteration of the unfit. The best way to hate a nigger is to hate him before he is born. American eugenicists were routinely praising Hitler and holding up the Nazi eugenics program as a model for the United States to copy. Non-white races must be excluded from America. The red and black races, if left to themselves, revert to a savage or semi-savage state in a short time. The only way possible of decreasing Negro population is by means of controlling fertility. Birth control facilities could be extended relatively more to Negroes than to whites, since Negroes are more concentrated in the lower income and education classes. We hope that the restraint of population growth can come about through voluntary means. But if it does not, involuntary methods will be used. There should be national sterilization for certain dysgenic types of our population who are being encouraged to breed and would die out were the government not feeding them. If this movement continues, we soon may be accused of fighting poverty by eliminating the poor and overcoming hunger by removing the hungry. For all their failures, what the eugenics movement had accomplished was to lay the foundation for the next phase of their plan. And this is where they would find the success that they had been chasing for over 100 years. Welcome back. All right, a couple of things we didn't get to in the first segment, and then we've got a really good guest. Um, in Canada, and you know, we, we consistently report here about the number of women who were murdered by pro-choice men when the women refused to have abortions. I mean, almost right. every month we have one or two, some, sometimes four, I think last month we had four in one month where this had happened somewhere in the country. One of the news stories, the, all the news, the whole news. Was, right, yeah, the whole news whole, last month, I think. News, yeah. um, in Canada, they, the parliament took up a bill to make it illegal to force a woman to have an abortion. And it was defeated. The pro aborts went absolutely nuts over this. Whoa, whoa, no. whoa, 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 whoa. Listen, no it will happen right here when some states tries to, some state tries to make it illegal to force a woman to have an abortion. Oh the American pro life community will I mean pro abortion community will do the same thing. So they don't care if women are forced. The, the, and the reason is they know their best clientele is the man. The man. The men man. have always been the best clientele for abortion. Well, you're talking about choice going out the window. That's it. Well, it never was in the window. That was it. That, but, that's that's well, it's never wow. choice anyway. This, this, it's one way. It's but this one is ticket. one of the women. Yeah. This is one of the reasons that early feminists in this country, the Susan B. Anthony's and Elizabeth A. Right. Katie Stanton's and Virginia Woodhull's and Evelyn Judge, all these women were pro-life mm -hmm. because they recognized that abortion was something that served the purposes of sexually predatory and sexually irresponsible males. And these pro-aborts recognize the exact same thing today. Their business would crater if you start prohibiting women from being forced to have abortions, and they know it. So they opposed it. Um, well, technically, we still have we have a, an anti-forced or anti-coerced abortion law on the books in FACE, technically, but it's never been it's used never gonna, for that. FACE was designed to go after pro-lifers. That's exactly what it was designed for, but they threw that proviso in just right. to appease the pro-lifers to vote for it. Right. And remember the big Senate debate, all these pro-life uh, Republicans, so-called pro-life in, uh, in the House as well, voted for the FACE bill. Yeah, well, like Kay Bailey Hutchison here in, in Texas, who so many people think she's a pro-lifer and she's a rabid pro-abort. Um, we also had a little incident up in Illinois. At, the situation at Rockford, Illinois is out of control. It's spinning out of control. It is totally out of control. The, the police, the local um, uh, law enforcement agencies, the city council are backing the violence that is being done against the pro-lifers, and it's getting to the point. Somebody's going to get killed. Um, you just had a woman threatened with a gun by a pro-abort. Right. The police show up. Um, he's got a gun. They talk to him. Uh, the owner of the abortion clinic comes out. They're all standing around glad-handing and shaking hands, and they leave, and nothing was done. A pro-lifer shows up there with a gun. Mm -hmm. That person's going to a federal penitentiary. Well, that has not happened. Right. Right. That has not but, happened. But if it did, right. he would be locked For away, life. throw away the key, you'd never see the guy again. And these people are, I mean, this thing in Rockford, I'm telling you right now, 
somebody's going to get killed. Some pro-life the police are participating in some they are. violence. They are. We know that. They've got them on video doing it. It's it's out of it's out of hand. And then they have this um, clinic e clinic escort training up there. Uh, Death escort. Yeah, for a few weeks ago, uh, that night bricks were thrown through the front uh, through through the front windows of uh, Joe Scheidler's house that night. Um, so things are getting out of hand up there, and, and they're going to continue to get out of hand, I'm afraid. Let's talk about MAFA 21. So many neat things are happening around the country on that, and we're going to have a guest on here in a minute that's really um, at the forefront of this and has been since day one. But um, we found a thing, or we were sent a thing the other day, an African-American pastor who used to be, he won't use his name because he's very well known. Um, we know who he is, but... Anyway, he was, he was a very famous disc jockey, and he wrote this thing to us. He says, I was a number one radio disc jockey for both rhythm and blues stations and top 40 stations owned by the same company. The rhythm and blues station was saturated with family planning commercials, while the top 40 stations had absolutely none of those commercials. Wow. Mm -hmm. And he says, we knew that our rhythm and blues audience was almost entirely black, our top 40 station was almost entirely white. Mm. Same company owns both stations. All the family planning ads were on the black station. What does that tell you? Wow. And this is going to be something to pay attention to even to today. Uh, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, so far Planned Parenthood has only advertised in the black community. They sent cars out in the black community, and that had been on the radio stations there too. But only on the black stations, only on the... This is interesting. Yep, it is. Well, here's something so, else that's interesting. When we started the MAFA 21 project, another project was going on uh, down in Atlanta, Georgia, with an or organization called the Radiance Foundation. And uh, Radiance Foundation is putting these billboards up in, in Atlanta and around Georgia. And now this project has expanded to all over the country, uh, talking about uh, how abortion targets the African-American community. The interesting thing about this is... Um, the pro abort now are coming out here saying that Ryan uh, Bomberger, who's going to be with us here in a few minutes, and this Radiance Foundation is working in cahoots with Life Dynamics over MAFA 21. To be honest with you, I'd never heard of them before MAFA 21, and I doubt he'd ever heard of me. So uh, that's kind of interesting that they link us together. This is just simply a matter of two different minds thinking alike. But I tell you, it's a perfect fit. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it works perfect. These black and beautiful, too many aborted dot com. Uh, this he also did a, a billboard that one in Georgia that really stirred her thing was endangered species. Endangered yes. species. Well, let's bring him on. Hello, Ryan. Hi, how are you? Fine, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> uh, do you find it interesting that they've hooked us together when, in fact, you and I had never even spoken before this thing started? Well, I would have to say the mainstream media definitely has a monopoly on the whole conspiracy thing because everything has to be some sort of crazy conspiracy. It's a lot easier than them actually doing the research and finding out what the actual facts are. So, yeah, I, I've learned a lot of things about me. I'm white. I'm from the South. I'm a racist. I'm a bigot. But yet I'm a northerner who's half white, half black, as black as Obama. That's how I describe myself. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, they just don't get a whole lot right. Which is a shame because in the end, it's the issue that is so tragic that requires them being right and getting these details um, out to the public. Well, I was, I was on a talk show the other day, Ryan, you, you'll appreciate this, and this, this black woman called in and said, you can't know anything about this issue because you're not black. And I said, well, does truth only come from people with black skin or does it only come from people with black, white skin? H how is this? I thought we were trying to get beyond this, right. this yeah. idea in our, in our culture. But these people aren't trying to get beyond it. And as you can imagine, uh, Ryan, I am constantly told that I have no right to even speak out on this issue um, because I'm, bl I'm not black. And you get it because you're only half black. So. <laughs> right. So I guess, yeah, I get a, um, you know, half the amount of time, I guess, to, to chime in. But the ridiculous part of this is that biology demands that we're all involved. I mean, it is a human crisis. It takes both male and female to procreate, so we both should have a say. Right. And so I think it's just about as ridiculous as those who say, for those who denounce, for instance, um, child abuse, you can't speak up unless you've been abused yourself. Right. You That's know, nonsense. We can all, um, you know, defend those who are most vulnerable and those who are 
are hurt right. simply because we're all human. And that's the issue. It is a human crisis. It's a human rights issue. That, that's period. exactly right. Well, the neat thing is because of, of my Alpha 21, and the, and the incredible success we're having with that and the, and the amazing things that you guys are doing with the billboards around the country, um, we're seeing a lot of new black faces in the pro-life movement, mm -hmm. and especially among young people. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that's very encouraging, and I know you're seeing that, Johnny. And, yes, um, yes, there was a meeting in Atlanta uh, with new black leadership, and I was, I was blessed because there were people there I had never met before never seen before. They're coming there about the abortion issue. And brother, they are coming fired up. Right. So it's not like a little tiddly whitly thing, you know. It's, it's uh, Tiddly whitly, is that, a, is that a technical term? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. Too standard. Well, hey. and, I was, and I always suppose there's always going to be some people that's going to be a little, well, let's be peaceful about it. Uh, but I, but I, I'm serious. There's a real, there's a real change coming up in the atmosphere. And uh, those billboards, uh, the, the brilliance of what uh, Ryan has done, he bypassed the regular media altogether. Oh, yeah. Right. And by putting it on the billboard, uh, the first time we really uh, saw a glimpse of the effectiveness of it was in Georgia. Right. And um, Now, Ryan, how many states are you in right now with billboards? We've, uh, we've been in Arkansas, Texas. Um, right now we're in Wisconsin, which has very interesting dynamics in and of itself. And there are about three or four other states that are extremely interested, and we're in the planning stages right now for some other states. I can't mention who they are, but they're going to launch in, in January. So we're ecstatic that there are organizations, of this multiracial, multigenerational, uh, and even politically diverse approach and coalition that are coming to coalitions that are coming together to support this campaign and the message, because we know, you know, Abortion is a cancer, and how the heck do you attack cancer But at the root? And that's what we're doing. And um, it's, it's been amazing, those that, who have embraced it. Getting billboards has to be expensive. Do you get help with that, it funding? Yes. Um, from the vast right-wing right conservative uh, you Conspiracy. Know, cabal. Right. <laughs> um, that's where we get all our money, which is so funny because I'm like, well, um, when that money comes in, you let me know. Because I haven't really seen it from that, whatever that nebulous group is. Um, right, the funding you, you, actually is not that big of a deal. It's actually pretty inexpensive to do billboard campaigns, particularly when you get um, public service announcement or nonprofit pricing. Mm -hmm. And so compared to a lot of other public campaigns, I think it's a really powerful and effective way of communicating a message um, without having to spend a whole lot of money. So I wonder, are you getting any resistance from the billboard companies themselves? I, I know we've tried to produce some pro-life billboards in the past and have been completely shut down by the major players in the industry. I think, well, one, because of the specific messaging with this, which uh, Dr. Hunter, who I owe a whole lot of gratitude um, toward, he is the reason that I started digging deep into um, finding out the, the history and eugenics uh, background of Planned Parenthood. So... He is the reason for a lot of that. But anyway, the specific messaging, um, and because it has kind of a uh, this team of African Americans who are standing behind it, I think it has allowed some of these billboard companies who would normally be resistant to it to uh, allow such messaging. Now, we have gotten some resistance up front. CBS Outdoor, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to mention names. but That's you are. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I already did it. CBS Outdoor initially rejected the first campaign, Black Children Are Endangered Species. Five days uh, went by after all the billboards were supposed to be up, and they had resisted. The short story is um, higher-up uh, individuals in the company finally looked at TooManyAborted.com and said, we will have all these billboards up starting Monday. It was a Monday after Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So we felt that was a phenomenal victory um, oh, because yeah. it could have just been you know, short-circuited right there. There have been a few other outdoor companies that have suggested <laughs> their own messaging with it, which I find <laughs> hilarious. But um, for the most part, um, Lamar Advertising has been incredible. Really? They have been, um, they've been you know, staunch proponents and advocates of free speech, and they have allowed our messaging pretty much to go through unaltered. Well, if you ever have a problem, let me know, and we'll put together some truth trucks and, and roll those billboards exactly where you want them. Awesome. It's nice having a mobile billboard truck. 
Right. Absolutely. It was, it was funny. Uh, uh, Learn uh, did a project with uh, the Radiance Foundation for Texas, uh -huh. and um, they were they were very perturbed because they were very concerned, upset that a white group was getting ready to put up these billboards with this message. And when Ryan called me, so um, I called in and uh, I played the race card. <laughs> <laughs> if they want to play the race card, let's go with it. I said, you're dealing with a black group ran by blacks. Now, right. what's your problem? You got a problem dealing with blacks? We had no problem getting the billboards up in Texas. Right. Why does it matter? I mean, the, the, well, it shouldn't, the, but it does. Yeah. Yes, it, right. the, the thing of it is, until people see what Ryan has done on that website, because that billboard brings attention to a website. Mm -hmm. And once it brings uh, uh, attention to that website, people get on the website, then they see what the true message is. Mm -hmm. But until then, they uh, immediately look at it and think, oh, some white group don't like black folks. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, Ryan, we, we really appreciate what you're doing, and yes. I think it, it complements what we're doing with MAFA 21 perfectly. Um, and I even hear from pro-lifers that they think that you and I must be working in cahoots. Uh, and that's okay. I wouldn't be embarrassed to be seen with you or be known to be working with you, but... That hasn't been the case, but nonetheless, if that's what they think, that's fine. But um, I still say, and, and I will continue to say, that the key to ending abortion in America is in the black community. Mm -hmm. We get the black community activated, and we're starting to see that that's happening. Um, this thing is over, and the pro-aborts know it better than anybody else knows it, and that's why they're so ballistic over this over this project. So um, you just keep up the good work, Ryan, and if there's anything we can do to help you, you let us know, and if I need anything, I'm going to call you. Yes, well, we've been working all along, so we've got each other. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've known right? each other for, for years. <laughs> hey, would, it's I a natural harmony, and anymore. it's a beautiful thing. I am so grateful for Amatha 21 and what it's been exposing. It is a great tool for not just the Radiance Foundation, but for other individuals, like Dr. Hunter was talking about, who have been awakened, and they have something tangible they can give to somebody. Look, sit down, watch this. Right. and be forever changed. So right. thank you. Well, thank you, Ryan, and, and uh, we'll be in touch. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you for joining us today, sir. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, the one thing I do like about Ryan, you got a young person who's actually has changed the dynamic and changed the way the pro-life put the message out. Yep. Uh -huh, right. Fresh idea. That's what we got to have it. We, we can't just, you know, this the old thing. If, if, you, you know, if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. And, um, you know, we've, we've got to get better than what we've always got. And, and I think that this campaign, whether his or ours or whatever, is going to be the thing that turns this movement around. We're already seeing it happen. Mm -hmm. We're already seeing it happen, and, and we're really excited about it. Uh, let's check in with Father Frank and Janet and see what they've got on their minds. Thanks, Mark. And friends, it's great to be with you again. Happy New Year. It's a, a time of rejoicing in the gift of life, which God gives to us in segments of, of years uh, it's like him giving us a new, fresh tablet to write the story of how we serve him and how we serve one another and how we especially serve the unborn child. We're here with Janet Morana, the executive director of Priests for Life and co-founder of the Silent No More Awareness campaign, which is uh, kicking into really high gear this month as it does every January. Janet, uh, good things coming up. That's right. And I'd like anyone listening, watching, you know, to remind them uh, that both in uh, Washington, D.C. and at the Walk for Life in San Francisco, the Silent No More Awareness campaign will be leading those two marches and walks at the front of the line, the men and women holding those signs, I regret my abortion, I regret lost fatherhood. So if you've had an abortion and gone through healing, even if you're not ready to speak your testimony publicly yet, but you'd like to march with us and hold that sign, we want to have more people than ever before marching. And you know, I think last year we had about 100 people in Washington and maybe about 15 or 20, you know, out in San Francisco. But, you know, Father, so many people have gone through the Rachel's Vineyard program, so many healing programs. I'm convinced that there are so many people have been healed from their abortion. They do regret it, but they've been healed. And maybe they're ready this year to come with a Silent No More Awareness campaign to really show how many people have been hurt by abortion. But the good news is, they're back with the Lord and they've been healed because that encourages us. We know so many people. So they can go to our website, you know, uh, priestforlife.org. There'll be a link to the Silent No More website uh, and they can register if they're going to come and then we'll give them all the instructions of how to pick up their signs, how to meet up with me and Georgette and you. Uh, and they'll be right there at the front of the march, which is fantastic. And then, of course, in Washington, we get to the front of the Supreme Court. We begin our gathering and tell the testimonies. This is, this is so key that these men and women be out front and, and symbolically in the front of the pro-life movement by marching at the, at the front of these marches. Why? Because it's attacking 
a fundamental assertion of the other side, right. which is they'll say to us, look, whether this is a baby or not, whether you can show me on the, on the ultrasound or not, whether you can prove when life begins or not, they say all of that is beside the point. This helps women, and that's all that counts. And here we are, these silent no more men and women saying, no, it doesn't. That's it's a right. bad product. It's a false promise. A promise. It's a dead end. Uh, and here we are to say so from our own experience, which you cannot contradict. That's it's right. so powerful. So like I said, Father, even if they're not ready to tell their story publicly, but they have told their family, you know, they know they've had, you know, they know they've had an abortion. They've gone through healing. They're very important that they've gone through healing. Uh, and they'd like to just come and march with us and hold that sign. We want them to be part of the camp.